we were told one the reason why we come in the house of God is first of all to worship God. And worshiping here means establishing a relationship with God, an intimacy with God. Having that friendship with our God so that we can be able to relate with God in any other matters. You cannot be able to relate with a stranger. And therefore every Sunday we come to tell God who he is and what he has really ordained in his word that we should be saying, that we should honor him. That is the major and the great reason as to why we come into the house of God. But then we also come because there are things in this life, humanly speaking, we cannot be able to achieve them without God. The Bible says, man shall not live by the blood alone, but by everyone that proceeding from the mouth of the Lord. The fact that we have the bond, you have the bond as I have. There are things you can be able to achieve through this body. One of the things that you are able to achieve with the light now as we speak is that you can be able to see me. Is that they can be able to hear me. Praise the Lord. But can I tell you that is the lowest version of you? There is a, another lamb which is superior. And this is what the Bible says. Man shall not live only by this blood that you can be able to see. And by, 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 by blood alone that you hit. But by every word, there is spirit in the word of God. The spiritual lambs. The spiritual lambs are eyes that can see. The spiritual lambs are ears that can be able to hear. Praise God. And therefore, when things happen in our life and we don't know the way, the best place for us to get solutions is not from the witch doctors and sorcerers. It's not from any other altar. The best place is for you to come in the house of God and tell the Lord, this is why I've, through the divine enablement that you have given me as a man, I can be able to come this far. As far as, as regards the finances and my health law, and the issues of my family, and what I am encountering, Lord, I can only come this far. Lord, what is your divine provision for me to overcome what I see? So there is that layer, and that's why we come to God again to receive, which is not available in the world. There is divine healing. There is divine provision. There is divine protection. There is anything that is something divine. Praise God. And that's why we come here. So even as you listen to me, this, and you have a need, and you have a concern, this is the light place that you knew that it should be. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, it is the desire of the Lord to heal every sickness, to make miracles that are superior and are great. But I will prepare for that. Praise God. Are we prepared to receive from God? How much does it take you to prepare to go for work? Praise God. Can you visualize? How does it cost you to add your business work if you are a business person? Praise God. How long does it work going to take you to work to ensure that you are smart as you are? Praise God. It takes time. Then why when we come to the house of God, you can never cheat God. That you will give him a whole deal. Do you know what I'm saying? It is the desire of God to do extraordinary things in your life. And it is in his capacity to do that. It's never limited. But have we invested enough? Praise God. If you are not taught or you are not spent time in this kingdom, you can do very little on it. Praise God. So I want you to ask yourself, when you are coming before God, what has this costed you? When you knew there is a Sunday service, and I started by confessing I came a little bit late. I didn't intend. But if it is an habit, when you know this, I can come and no one will ask me question. Surely no one will ask you, and no one will beat you. But I don't you know that God is seeing? 
Don't you know that they are children? You have who are watching. Praise God. When you're making a presentation here, is this something you have just organized here and you're presenting? Does it, did it cost you to spend the time before the Lord? Just allow me to challenge ourselves because this is the way we lose it. We can we cannot achieve God. For you to receive Christ as Lord and Savior, it has to cost Jesus' blood. Then how do you expect extraordinary results from God if you are not able and willing to give up something? It doesn't work that way. Principles of life is that you give in something to receive. When you are your child, God can understand this is a child. But as you continue growing and maturing, the Lord there is a praise. The prayer used to answer when you are a small child, you will never answer again. Praise God. So I want you to have that task even as you serve God. Don't walk with God with some time and then when this doesn't happen, you start questioning God. Question yourself first. What has been my work? What has been my contribution to the house of God? Praise God. Rainy Chariot is the desire of God to see you live well and have a victorious life. Praise God. When it comes to the singing like you are singing, do you sing out of your heart? Or you are just waiting for a wedding somewhere when there is a mugidi and you will do it like in a right. All your energy you are going to pour them there. Do you think God is blind? He doesn't see. Praise God. He, 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 we can never, we can never cheat God, my friend. Or maybe we have a rally somewhere. No, we know we are Christian, but at the time we, we find ourselves in this other soul somewhere. And maybe for it's a area and they are singing and they are coming with that verse and they, those beats they are beating theory and you are lost, you are forgotten even you are unbeliever. And there you are. When you come to the house of God, probably you put your hands there, your movements are minimal, and your spirit is going to move. We can never cheat God. I'm sorry for going away, but uh, I, I just wanted us to, to have that an idea, God intention for you. If you have to give Jesus for our sin, so that we may not die, what can he do for you and me? That's how much he loves you. But then when you come and put a limitation on God, he has nothing else that he can be able to do because you have made a choice. But I want to thank you, the church of um, uh, Royal Old East, because you have made a choice. And that choice is Jesus. That choice is best that comes from God. And that's why we are here. And therefore, I'm grateful for you. I'm not quarreling you. I'm thankful because of God for that. Now, I, I have something as we were shared, we, we were... We were talking about our theme today, Responsible Christian citizen, uh, citizenship, citizenship. That's what I want us to share today. And uh, there is a time I was looking why Jesus was so successful in his ministry. And uh, as I was reading the Bible of God, I came across one verse that says, and Jesus went into the synagogue teaching the gospel of the kingdom, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and also he was healing the sick and the deceased. And the people under the whole team who are sick, who are paralyzed, who are all manner of things, and Jesus Christ was able to heal them. Praise God. He taught, he preached, and then the miracle followed. Praise the Lord. Now, the reason why we come into the church, first of all, is to give you the knowledge about the word of God. <coughs> so, teaching is very critical. Praise God. And now after we, we are taught and to, we know, then now we go to preaching. 
Preaching is now where we have uh, an opportunity to make declarations in accordance to what the Bible says. So if we are saying we are blessed, why, what is our support that you are blessed? So there is a scriptural support as why we are blessed. When you are saying we are healed, that you know the Bible in a particular place is I'm ill. So you making a declaration when you are preaching and I told you that I say, declare that you are healed. That in this nation there will not be chaos. There will not be, and you say amen, you jump. Do we jump with understanding? If we are taught, we will jump with our understanding. And the Lord says, I watch over my one to fulfill it. Now, when you see your jumping, is one in your jumping and my jumping. Her answer is a short. Praise God. And therefore, I, I want to talk, because it was it's called a, T1, a, a, a Christian T1 Ship Sunday. And I want just on us to reflect a bit. What is this Christian T1? And I begin with some definition, of which I know you, you also know and you can also be able to go. But for the sake of the sermon, I want us to understand who a steward is. I know you have some in the sake. And uh, one of the definitions says it is a person employed to look after passengers on a ship, on an aircraft, on a train. That is very clear. I want to go deep. Or it is a person responsible for surprise of food to a courage club on other institution, a person. So a person doing those activities is called a, a steward. The reception point of it, that this is a supervisor, the one who supervises arrangements to keep on the, at a, a large public event. That are steward. You are overseeing you are looking to ensure things are well. Praise God. Is a manager who look after others' property. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just, just, just have those definition in your life. So in this de 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 definition, they show they shows us two things. There is direct involvement where you are taking actions. That you are surprised that you are doing some activities, and there is also indirect involvement where your 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 role is a supervisor of your role. Praise God! You are managing, you are directing to ensure that things are well. So the the, the stewardship is a job of supervising or taking care of something. Praise God! Organizing, managing something on behalf of someone. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Praise God. Mm -hmm. Now when you are talking about Christian stewardship, it means we have other people who do the same thing, but are not in the Christian way. You can be probably a leader. You are sure people will be fed, will eat, but the means by which they are eating are not right. Probably you are crafting your way out, or probably you are stealing. But people are still being supervised, and they are still eating. So, the text is deliberate to put here Christian stewardship. And we are called because we are Christian-like. Hallelujah. So, when you are talking about Christian stewardship, is carrying this work of a steward with Christ in mind. That at the end of it all, God is going to be honored through what we do. It is God's wish to collaborate with us in the areas of creation, redemption, sanctification. Praise God. So, God's intention is to collaborate us in this area of stewardship. When you read Psalms, I know we learned some verses, I'll be referring to them, but I'll give, be giving other many others. Psalms 115, verse 16. The Bible says, The heavens belong to the Lord, but the heart he has given to men. Praise the Lord. What does that mean? There are activities that God can never do on earth without a man. Praise God. 
So God, you are very important as far as stewardship is concerned. Because on the earth, God is a spirit, he can never step down here. Praise God. Therefore, from the above definition about what stewardship is, we are seeing a steward is not the owner. Praise God. And another thing is that uh, he is entrusted with a responsibility. And then that steward is accountable to the owner who gives that person the responsibility. And as believers, we are going, to, we are supposed to carry the role of stewardship in fear of God, in godly manner. Praise God. Now, if you want to really understand stewardship, you see it like from the creation. When God creates man, he says, let us create man in his own image. Let God create me and you in his own image. So that one in itself tells you that you are not of, of yourself, you are an image to God. But there is no way you can impose and you can do all manner of things, knowing that there is, we have an image of someone, they decided that we should have their image. If it were not so, we could not be existing. <coughs> Praise the Lord. The other thing that we see is that uh, when God called Abraham, another law, you see the aspect of stewardship again. No, no, that, that part of creation again, you see, the law of stewardship. After being created, he was blessed. God blessed him to increase, to be fruitful, and to subdue the heart. He was, man was given a responsibility. Praise God. So, we see the same thing when the call of Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to some verses down here. He says, I will make your name great, and through you the nation will be blessed. Hallelujah. Again, Abraham is getting blessed not because of his family, not because of his life alone, not because so that he can be our name, but because of the nations. Adam is blessed to be fruitful, to increase, to subdue, not because of himself, that through that God may be worshipped. Praise the Lord. If you note every time God wanted to deliver the people of Israel from captivity, he had to raise a man. So this man was not being raped to, to deliver himself. Moses was not delivering himself. He, he was raised to deliver the children of Israel. Talk of Gideon, talk of Deborah, talk of Moses, talk, talk of all these servants. God was raising them for a specific purpose. So I want you to understand this bit because not unless we understand this, then you may take the work of God for granted when you come to the church. When the church says, let us give, when the church says that do something, or when you are called to do something in the community, you think you're giving us too much. My friend, that's why we have been created. Praise God. We are not of our own. The greatest Example of stewardship in the Bible is why we see Christ coming in. Jesus was given the responsibility of delivering man from sin. Praise God. So we see Jesus did not send himself. He was sent by God, his Father. He accepted the responsibility to the extent that he even went to the shedding of blood of this man. Praise the Lord. So he was accountable to God on the mission that he was given. And therefore, he obeyed. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20, that don't you know our bodies are the temple of God? We are not our own, we are being bought by the price and by the, by the precious blood of Jesus. 
So if you understand, if I and you understand who we are on what God really look, what how God look at us, we will not have problems serving the Lord or being responsible for the things that God calls us to do. And now coming to ourselves and where we are, I want to let you know there is a responsibility. There is a stewardship law that is in you, right from the time you were created. Sammy says in Psalms 1, 39, 16, all the days ordained for me were written in your books before one of them came to be. So God had already written the name, the, what he has ordained days and he knew what you ought to do. So you are not an accident. Praise the Lord. Unless you want to make yourself one. The book of Ephesians chapter 2, I think verse 10. It says, we are God workmanship. Created to do that God created, made for us before the start of time. Before God created you and me, what he did, he established some work for you and the need to do. And therefore he went ahead and created you and me. The biggest challenge is where we are not able to identify that work. Christ himself in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7, he says, I have come into the volume of the book. I have come to do your will, the, your will, oh my Father. I am not just coming, I am coming to do the will of the Father. Praise God. Including our friend who visited us today, our friends who visited us today, and us who are here. What is your responsibility? Can you say that you have a responsibility in this church? Praise the Lord. Amen. How are you aligning yourself to that responsibility? Praise God. Amen. The other aspect of our uh, stewardship is spreading the Bible or now Jesus or now a, a worker went on a journey and divided some tarries. Praise the Lord. Some were given to five for another one, two, and another one. And you know the one one, one what he did. The five one multiplied, the two multiplied, and they were given according to their ability. So the assignment and the work that the Lord has given you is in accordance to your ability. God can never give you more. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you are buying a plot or a place to build a church, that is a, a whole church responsibility and assignment and God says that you are able. Praise the Lord. Never says that you are few. That is not in the, in, the, in the vocabularies of God. He knew that these people in Ghana, they are two, four. Now they were four. I think now you are And now your sister in law says that she's. No. God knows how to work his things. Praise the Lord. So never limit God. It's never limited by situation and circumstances. Unless we limit ourselves. So we see. This one going and hiding it. And God says that because of even not multiplying what I'm giving, I will take away. And at that time, that is what happened in our lives. When we don't do our assignment well, we may think that we are growing. We may think we are doing so well there in our business. And in fact, it is evident there is no problem in our life. But I watch the generation that will come after you. That is the one thing that people forget. Yeah? They take just the work of God, just nothing. They did the minister Christian that make noise. They come to pray. I don't know what they are asking every night. Just watch your generation of our, our, our time. The children that you love so much, or oh, now they are going to suffer. And that is the message that church will give you. Has the parents, we don't really attach to this God and we leave these children to the hell and they have no protection, they are not covered. They, they also dishonor this God. And what I wait them is you have money. You take the children out to the best school. And then a child come and do and su commit suicide. Did you prophet that sure? Is that really a prophet? Is that a wisdom? That you have spent so much on a child. And one day you just score a little and then goes and commit suicide. 
So you may think that there is nothing you are not doing in the house of God. Things you are investing so much, you are investing for generations. Let me know, not go that way. So what you, we are saying uh, here is that um, stewardship is very broad. But I was just laying a foundation that um, God is really looking to us as whether we are good, good stewards as he created to, uh, us to be. There are areas of stewardship that are topic by themselves that we can be taught and really question ourselves whether we have been good stewards. Our holy bodies, the body that God has given you, have you taken care of this? It well? That God that calls it your temple? What do you eat? What do you consume? A topic by itself. Our spiritual life, how do you keep your fire burning? That when the enemy comes, he really does not sweep you. Or when temptation comes, you don't fall away. How do you keep your spiritual flavor? And ministering our talents and our spiritual gifts. If God has gifted you, take the praise and worship you on the, this instrument. How are you dispensing that gift to the world? They are gifts which are meant for the church and also in the world in the marketplace because they don't need to go, no, go through that area. How are you using them? I told you by itself. Resourcing to advance God's kingdom with the wealth and the riches, finances, expertise, profession that we have. How are you using the same? Are we good stewards in the house of God in ensuring the church of God and the verses? We not live in this Mavatis for long and long, long time away, a long, long time. Whereas God, the individuals who we are uh, uh, blessed so much, and you expect we are as we, we, we are saying, everyone should bring 2,000, 2,000. And when you are bringing 2,000, you also bring 2,000, and you know that you are millionaire. Sometimes that's also that there are some things that you do and don't agree with. They are, they are just good for management, but when you look at them, when you go to a, a, a prosap and say, profit is a good indication. You can tell people and go and look at But when you go and tell everyone should bring, and you bring this and this. You don't know some, probably what they had, they committed themselves to, to, serve, to a mission somewhere, and they don't have money. They can only give this much. So you have shut the door for that person. Praise God. Others, there are so much, but because you said this, then you will bring that and they are very happy because you did. This leave it open. Praise the Lord. Can we be content to be good uh, stewards? In our family, God says that um, he loved marriages because he was looking for godly children. How are you blessing children in a godly man? How are you topic? How are you taking care of your husband and your wife? Responsibility. You ask for them, God gives them. When he comes and asks us, how are we fearing? What will we say? A question. Our community around us, I know what we are they feeling us. Now these are topics of stewardship that we can learn and question ourselves, how are we becoming good stewards? Now because I don't want uh, to learn now, I just want to take a few minutes and then take, um, we pray. I want us now to look at today's topic that says respons responsible Christian citizenship. We are in a, a very defining moment, and I know that the ones who prepared this particular um, uh, topic for this, uh, uh, for this season is because they knew the position we are at a nation. So as Christians, how are we responsible for the leaders that you are choosing right now? Maybe as a president, as a governor, member of parliament, MCA, women representative, senators, where are we coming in? Are we joining the world in politics and making noise the way they are making? Or are we using the Christian values to ensure that you have the right people in place? Praise the Lord. So this is what the Lord is asking us. When you talk about a citizen, 
is a it is a state of uh, someone being a citizen, uh, a citizen of a particular county country. Paul in the book of Prepare chapter three twenty then says also that we are not the citizens of this world. Our citizenship is not here. Praise the Lord. So we are citizens and we are not again. So the, the question that uh, the, 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 the preparers needed to ask ourselves is, is we are citizens and we are not. How do we ensure that as a citizen as we are, and as we are not because we don't live in this place, that God's purposes are fulfilled? Praise the Lord. We are not because our working, the way that we we deal with the things is not ugly. It's this heavenly bound. That's why our citizen is, is heaven. Though we are citizen of Kenya. Praise God. Our assignment is to ensure that the community or the environment that we are living in will allow Christ to be expressed through us. <coughs> so even as we're thinking about electing the leaders, what we, we are voting for is not a relative, or is not a someone who is popular, but someone who enable Christ to be expressed in this nation. I remember there is a time we had a prayer for Kenyans of prayer, and they were praying that uh, it doesn't matter who we choose, but we need to be careful that we choose someone who is going to introduce Antichrist in our nation. You may choose someone, and by choosing that person, person you have rejected Christ. Because the things he's going to come with are things which are ungodly. Now this is your LGBT. Let me take for instance. You know there is a leader you can elect, and then for indeed it, it becomes a role. That the LGBT member of homosexuality, ritualism, and that is what it means. Praise the Lord. It becomes a role by just electing a leader because he has authority as we say. So he just signed it and that's all. You are going to submit to that. You, 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 everyone is, is, every person you are supposed to train them when they come to a church. Praise God. That's how serious it is. Praise the Lord. Now, if you want again to understand the heart of God concerning the leadership of our responsibilities as leaders, as, uh, as Christians in the place of the politics or also in, the, in, the, in our nation at time like now, I think you go to the Bible and read the mind of God and what we need to do is accept that mind of God. Don't accept the mind of the... The, the challenge is that we, are not able to, uh, we have not grown ourselves enough to hear from God. Therefore, we listen to the one that people are saying are popular. Praise God. It is good we pray and we pray and ask God. Even if we don't hear, we can say we pray. Probably you pray and God and, and, and call somebody else to hear. But even if we don't pray and we're going to vote, exactly we are voting with what is wrong. Even if you vote in the wrong person, you are part and part of this because you didn't take time in prayer to stop which is evil. That is the message that you're making. Probably you're not matured enough for not to tell you this is not the person, this is the, this is the person. Because that's the position that we need to be. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember there is somewhere praise in prayer. We went and we prayed somebody out. I want to tell you who is. It was Kenyans of prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. The power, I think that we could become going to that point. And they decided because of one, two, three, three things. This person, we have to pray him out of the position. I can tell you for sure that this finish one week. It indeed finish. That person has to go out. That is the power I'm talking about that is in the church. But we are not expressing it. So when a church or a prayer meeting is being asked, you, you think that these people are joker, they just want to trap us. But the, we have no other way of winning as Christians. Let me tell you. There is no other place of connecting with the divinity except prayer. I can tell you for sure. 
And the reason why even those miracles that you went won't happen. This church you see here, it can move within some man. Because it's not just need one person to be blessed and come and see this work of God. The whole Muslim do. I, w I want to start with this church. And that's it. But those people don't come in here. They are resisted by the devil. They can never come. They can only be brought back by the friend. Which most of us are not willing to pay the price. This why I post, they, they, they don't want to go in that your prayer because that, that I can venture so much. They went and tried to cast a demon. And Jesus told them, ah, why, why were we not able to cast this one? And we have always been with you, you know how you do it. This one can only go through prayer and are we ready to go that level want to hit the roof out back and this? <laughs> Let me not go that way. So, to have the mind of God concerning our nation, Kenya, and I thank because our pastor prayed for our nation, and that's where we are. And there are churches which are very serious about this. Pre praying and praying and fasting and no. I know one who is uh, who, the, the, the one who is uh, going out around the, the nations and praying. Praise the Lord. Fast then for 40 days, having an abundance of, uh, of millions just to go and raise the voice of God over this nation. Praise God. Things don't happen just that way. They are meant to happen by people who know how to pray. So those, those men, they know what will work for this nation and know what is at stake, what the kingdom of darkness is made, they know. So um, one of our responsibilities and good stewards of our nation of Kenya is when you look what God do to Adam, as we learn, he blessed him to increase, to multiply, to subdue. How do we participate in that as Christians? Praise the Lord. Ha <laughs> ha. The, 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 the other version of it, I think I mentioned it, where the Abraham is blessed to become a blessing. And the other thing is where we see Christ in Isaiah chapter 9, I think verse 2 there, where he said the people who are living in darkness have seen great light. That through Christ, those in darkness have seen light. That through you and me, those in the nation of Kenya who are in darkness, they suddenly they have seen different because I am in Christ. Are you getting it now? The still one sheep. We read, let me now go to back to our verses. In Matthew chapter 5 from 13 to 16, we are the salt of the world. Praise the Lord. We are the light of the world. And you are told, a saint of the hill can never be hidden. It means if really we are that light, this light will be deprecated in this nation. So there are some ways that this light or a stewardship can be experienced in the nation of Kenya right now through the church. One of them is direct involvement in the national building through what we do, our professional business, and also um, by doing them in a country manner. All of you. We never do business in church, as well as the, the pastor, who totally devoted to the church. But in one way or the other, you interact with the world. Therefore, the way we carry out our business, the way we do, you know, you know, you know, come away from Christ, we are not in Christ. Praise God. When you corrupt a policeman, you are not different. I, I know this is a very tricky idea because I've also been there several times. Me na police and the, all the police want is a blight. Sometimes I'm the law and the other time I'm really not really on the law. Praise the Lord. But can I tell you that for, for sure? In all those cases, God has delivered me. What is a big deal? 
Because once you introduce that spirit, I'm just giving an example. It is not easy, I agree. I agree with you, it is not easy. Because even me, I went, sometimes I went up to the court. And even that court, it was not easy. I was put in a various position to corrupt before I meet the judge. Yeah, that's how tricky it was. And I spent two days because of a traffic offense. It is not easy. But can you tell me the truth? Me kuona gari yangu kusimamishwa hivi na kuanga very rare. Very rare. Na nikisimamisha nikimuongelesha hivi, hiyo story imeisha. So it's something that you develop over time. So if you are doing some professional work or some tendering or whatever you, you do as a, a person, a business person, and then you don't involve God, you do it in a manner that does not please God. You are inviting a spirit. And therefore, we are not honoring God. We are not becoming good steward with the, what God has entrusted with us. Let me not bear that. Taking leadership laws and ensuring also we have the right people in us in place. That is another responsibility and which we have in this time. That we need to ensure eh, the ones who are going as a president, as a governor, as a senator, as an MCA human representative, those people, some of them, and I don't know even me, they represent very serious bad authors. That was a represent. So when you, you come and see people drinking so much and doing some very funny things, you don't understand that you have an authority there up there which is speaking of your life. And uh, another thing that you need to do is to honor, to support those God has put in leadership position, be it at church level and also in the marketplace. We read in Romans chapter 1, 13, 1, 1 to 7. This is a serious topic as far as Christianity is concerned. Now those that we have erected, we have a responsibility to support them. Even including our pastor here. He has a position. If it is a, our alone as steward as we have to support him. Because of the law that he holds. And as you are told, because he's the one who came, he has two things. He has Nicholas. The person, I always say, when you go to church, I tell people like that, he has Nicholas the office. <laughs> so there are things to fight thinking that you are not only seeing a person, you are fighting the office. And as you read in the book of uh, the, uh, the Romans chapter 13, what did the Bible say? A reader does not have a road just for nothing. He can punish. Praise the Lord. Don't you know that as a matter of God can punish you through the words? You can get tangled. Whether it's on the wrong or on the, on the, on the side. <laughs> That's why you need to pray for them, my friend. This is something here, a witness in our church. As a person that came and spoke something, and then people thought that it is just a person who is in the who is in the room, Wait, things happened. Until another one came and said whatever was said, I nullified another one, thing stopped. That is a protocol. When it comes to the industry. You got the wrong leadership in the position, those are the ones who are going to govern them. The Bible says that you obey them, you submit them. If you're not, you don't have an, a, a, an awareness or now you need to deal with an evil king. It doesn't matter. You destroy us. And that's why we need to watch. We have a time before between others to decide on who you need to elect. But if you can only sit down somewhere and politic and to not know to not say you know, you uh, to go away to sort it. Like you never know that it's a music. God can let like an like Paul and change that music or change whoever that evil man and use the same. When you know a common was a time, you never know. But that's the that, that bit God has hidden from us. He can use anyone anyhow. But if you don't pray, my friend, those things will never happen. Because me coming, I'm coming from Ghana. You need to have to learn to the America, I thought this is a man. Only to realize, is the only man that God has chosen in America to restore the church, to speak well of the nation of Israel. Is the only one who came, who came and supported the nation of Israel. And what does the Bible says about the nation of Israel? That are blessed are they that will pray for the safety of Jerusalem. It's a whole topic about 
um, praying for the nation of Israel. So, what I was saying is that um, we need also to support them. Um, they, they, they are authority. You are, we learned that they, are, they, they have authority from God. Uh, are you getting it? Whether they are good or not, we need to submit. Knowing uh, um, they, have, or they can be able to punish, and then also we need to fulfill our responsibility. Do we pay taxes? Ama una niwara una nanga kanjo una funga shop. I know this is a trick area also. Yeah? Ama una kuku account. Ama noita mtuwila na kujua kuku account visu. What are my contacts? See you, wow, you can handle things. Now, this that the, God is, is saying that you are the right of the one. This is how we become the light. By ensuring that you will pay our taxes. See, I mean, it's seven in Liberia. Because so much time was on me, Apple. Pay your taxes, your revenue, your dues to who is due. This is fair or not. So, come up on a man who will pay the tax, come and me, 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 una jiangalia, una andia mungwa, sign here. Praise God. Now, the other aspect we see in God in another that we can learn on how we become the stewardship is that um, that um, la, 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 um, wherever God wanted to deliver the nation of Israel from captivity, we see that God uh, was he, uh, he was always in the process of delivering the people of Israel from captivity. Also, we see him delivering from Babylon, and we also see him delivering man. And from uh, from sin through Christ Jesus, that's what we see in God too. So, what what does this show us in in regard to the issue of stewardship? It is when this man called that God came and delivered them. Praise God! Every time they did what was wrong, God cast them out them away. When they cried and returned to God. Praise God. God saved them. Now, our responsibility and our Christian responsibility uh, as a citizen of the nation of Kenya is that we may live a godly life. Praise God. Whether you are in your house, whether you are in your house, or you are in your house, everywhere, that you live a godly life. You are letting to tell people, you know, sometimes when I to my Panama Kasi, to my other man, you know, when I end up with that team building, and now when I'm in a picanga, what you are now, something that people need a time era. And if you are not very careful, come sick, come away, what, kill a kid to give me a day, you are up, kill a mutual in Praise God. So the environment is very much prepared for, even those who are who didn't want to go there, na pikino na futuo. Praise God. Now, in those situations, sometimes then you, this is the, the best place to, to preach. Because when your boss comes and asks you, Simon, why, what's the problem? Eh? But then now you need to declare your position. Because you don't declare it that thousand of you. Praise the Lord. So I then I had to tell my boss that this thing I don't do them. Well, I, because it's a meeting, I will go, but there's something I won't do. Praise God. So that's how we, 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 we express Christ through how we live out there. In fact, it is more pronounced out there other than, than our church. Our church, we do not in Bangasana, not in Tukoli, not in much, not in arrest. Praise God. Now, the other thing is that uh, the way we express and become the one shape in Christ is letting the world know that we, there is a way we connect divinely with God. Let me close with that. Uh, let me not even leave the mouth so that I don't speak so much. Praise God. Amen. And this is the, the verse that we, we read in the book of Timothy. First of all, I heard. What does this mean? First, first of all. And before you, you start anything, first of all, prayer should be made for kings that may be able to live a peaceful life. Praise God. Amen. So another responsibility for the body of Christ in, um, in this t as a citizen of Kenya that we can do right now is prayer. Praise God. Is what? Prayer. His prayer. 
And that's what we have been going to do even during our case and many other cases to come. The Bible, the book of, um, um, I say that is uh, Second Peter, chapter 1. It says, God has given everything that you need for life. So that you will be able to escape the corruption. And in fact, it says, He has divinely provided what you need for life so that you may be able to escape the corruption in this world. So He has given us everything. How comes then we are not living well? It's, it is because of inability for you and me to transport that God which has, he has written in the realms of the Spirit to be your experience. So if God said, I yield you, or your children are blessed, but you are not able to transport that possibility from the realms of the Spirit to the physical realm, you start, you really say, these things of God don't work. These things of God don't, doesn't work. Doesn't work. So prayer is a tool or is a way that we connect with the divine to receive things which are divine. Pastor learned about you here about the treasure. Do not lay the treasure but lay them. This is how we lay them. By the things of the spirit that now we can be able to assess them later through prayer. That is how we do downloading. Downloading for a computer and opinion of a picture. Now to download the kingdom of God things. We don't run them through prayer. If you have a challenge, like the one we have as a nation now that we need to have the right people in the nation, we can only download them through prayer. Book of Second Chronicles chapter 7, from verse 13, 14, if the people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and call me. I'll hear from their land, I will I hear from above and heal their heart. So these are the people who are, who are called by my name. Then they my themselves and repent. Our ear. So the, the Bible doesn't say that things just, just don't happen automatically because we came. And that's why we make a very serious mistake in church. You message in message and I'm messaging in. We to And I'm going to that's good. There's nothing you told God about what you had. Information alone will not interrupt you. But activating the power in that information through prayer. You ask God, this is what you have said? That by the threat on Jesus I'm healed, and I'm said, may I be healed. You are saying, self and God belong to you, Lord, and you are staying in this church. Lord, I'm not going, we're going to give you less until you do something and you go to the place of prayer. You contend with the powers that hinder blessing from coming. They are ruthless. You also need to be ruthless. And you can do this to only pray. I think I can't tell you no know, whether there is you I was telling about there is a place that time I went I wanted to go to my to our church session. And I know I was one we are a part of the people who you know are involved in it. And all of a sudden my child got sick. The small child, it's not a temperature juju. Ju, ju. We have to pray. You are not doing this in certain gender. You know there's some things. They happen, you think it's just unarunji, unarunja for a hospital. Then you are not going to have a scope. As the same is the end of a hospital, as long as we are on that, starting is part and part of us and body system. But I don't, you put in God first, even as you go. You don't even know arrangements on the devil. The devil can even arrange a doctor, my friend. When you are going to go to the house, you are going to mystic. I'm a move from the other kingdom. We do an establishment, we do a work with a Kuaitano. There's a time we were stuck in the hospital with a child for doing a Ivani Kasi. And then we came to the rest of my wife's story. Now, every time, Dr. Neta Kyong and I'm getting a bit serious, serious. That's why I can't get that in a way that I'm going to get it. That's why I'm going to get it. Then we know this. No, no, no. There's something which is here. And we said, let us pray. For some time, we go and now we come to to now break protocol so so we touch. No, Joe, we go now. We are going to make our financial arrangements. So that we come back, that we now that time we are going. But then I I I heard a voice which told me they need to hear what is delivering the child. They need to hear. So in this garden, we hold our hands and we pray with my wife. The following day, that we go up as queen, we are out of the hospital. So, what 
what I'm seeing, there is power in prayer. And that's why we are told to pray for our leaders. Praise God. Amen. Things about prayer I can tell you from testimony upon testimony, me and myself are experienced. Even without salary. Even for this nation, when there is chaos, don't think that they are men and the women who cry to God. I remember Kenya was on prayer used to meet in our church. And the guys who were reading those prayers, but they prayed. Pray this one, we cannot allow this to happen. Guess what? The peace came. Again, if you listen to our Kawaita and as the Vikia two individuals in culture. Let me give that I was in another camp again, I was a prayer maritana. And there is a servant of God who was sharing the guy where I'm sharing. Akatuambia from Zimbabwe. Akatuambia. There is a prayer mountain I have and the government wants to take the prayer mountain. That's how Serikali Gitam Tukwa Kitu Atakama ni pasta unawana siyo yyo wezi. I kneel down. That's how Kama means yyo ni kneel down and kapia wata umombe. Okay. Na yyo visi kama sisi ni kundao titu. Lakini tunawamba. We never knew what will happen. You never know. The right thing happened. That's how God works. Praise God. 